everyone, my name is Karina. Welcome back to the Karina Marie Handmade YouTube channel. So happy you're here. On this channel, we talk about all things knitting, crocheting, spinning, weaving, sewing, and quilting. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy you are here. If you are new, welcome. This is the third episode I am filming of the Karina Marie Handmade Knitting Podcast. I was long awaiting this day. It's been about a week and a half, maybe two weeks since I filmed episode two. And I have a lot of knitting to show you, some finished objects, and of course a whole lot of whips. Um, so I'm happy like I said to be sitting down again um, to share that with you we will start with what I'm drinking and let me grab my tea it's a little far away um, I think I already showed you this mug I know I said every episode I want to spotlight a new mug but this is just truly my go-to the first one I grab um, it is Julie Miller pottery gorgeous henna design and I am drinking a normal tea bag. This is Harney and Sons um, Paris tea. So it's a lovely Earl Grey. And if you haven't seen episode two called All the Socks and All the Tea, um, I let you guys know that Earl Grey is my favorite type. And I tend to sway towards David's Tea's Cream of Earl Grey. Um, but this Paris tea has a nice um, taste to it. And it's just easier if I want to do a tea bag and, instead of loose leaf. Although I know the caution is around tea bags of course so let me take a sip and then we will jump in that is super hot right out of the kettle um so i can start with what i am wearing i'm wearing a shawl take it off for you and a custom Karina Marie handmade shirt <laughs> i had made this shirt probably three or four years ago now when I was doing a lot of craft fairs um, or different markets selling finished knitted goods. Um, so I whipped this up and I wore it to those craft fairs and it's just been sitting in my closet. So I figured I would pull it out and share it with you. Um, back to the shawl. Of course, I don't need to describe what color it is to you, but this is the, I'm gonna butcher the name, the Evil shawl it's a free pattern by Spas tree co it's a regular triangle um pretty much stock and net although it does have some i think like pearls in a very few places so it just kind of gives a good texture um and then of course the center increase this yarn is uh indie dyed from barnyard knits um Barnyard Knits is one of my favorite indie dyers, and I actually have the same shawl, same pattern, in pretty much the same type of tonal, except it's blue, um, so I'll be able to wear that in a future episode, but this was, you know, when I was going into the office for work, what I would grab. Um, it's very lightweight, very good for springtime, but also um, very cute. I love it. I think it's an adorable... Um, little shawl and was under two skeins of yarn so a decent sized project um and i have the pattern here i'll link it down below just so you can follow along if you're interested in it but uh the name eviol and of course took a few years of french in high school don't know much um it means awakening in french and the motif evokes the awakening of nature in spring as the burgeoning seeds move into full bloom so it's a top-down triangle shawl knit in stockinette with a repetitive pearl stitch pattern and a garter border. It has a center spine, a two-stitch garter selvage edge at each end, and four increases on every right side row. Works up super quick. The pattern is very straightforward with the different row repeats. Um, so if you're interested in knitting this, highly recommend it. It's a free pattern. Can't beat that. Um, all right, next we can dive into my whip bin. Normally I have my bin sitting next to me, but today we have 
something else sitting next to me. And uh, <laughs> it's Ginger. <laughs> this is my sweet dog, Ginger. She can't be away from me for more than a minute. Um, the separation anxiety is so real. And uh, I figured, you know, she could sit with me here while I record today and uh, you get to see another Ginger. We are a big fan of Gingers in this household, <laughs> as I'm sure you could imagine. Um, okay. I will put this whip bin on my lap. Um, so if you don't know about the whip bin, I am gonna, you know, it's not already a thing, I'll start it. So normally we, we have our project bags that we put all of our projects in, but where do we put our project bags? Do we lay them on the floor? Do you put them on your coffee table? Do you have a separate basket next to your couch or wherever you normally knit? Um, this isn't the only place that I store project bags or projects um, but it's the one that I find easiest to keep on the floor next to the couch so I always know what's waiting for me to knit. Um, Ginger you're quite chatty down there. <laughs> well anyway we'll get started with my finished objects. Um, first up I have my Galantine socks and look sock blockers. These aren't the ones I thought I lost. I ordered um, a new set from Knit Picks. These are the medium size, just so I would have them because <laughs> I'm knitting socks like crazy. I don't know who I am, but uh, I guess I'm a sock knitter now. Anyway, these are the Galantine socks. This was a sock set collection from Chelsea Yarns. And I knitted these in about, oops, about 10 days. None of the ends are woven in and I haven't blocked them yet, but uh, that's okay, at least they're on blockers and you can see what the heck they are. So I alternated the heels and the cuffs for each of them, so it would be a nice opposite. <laughs> Ginger, they're gonna think my stomach's rumbling, but it's just you. <laughs> um, so these are the socks. They are super comfortable. This was an 80-20 merino nylon um, blend. I've only ever knit 75-25 blends, um, so we'll see how these hold up. And Knitting them, they did feel a little plumper, but um, no complaints here. And then it, a slip stitch heel. So the pattern I follow for these vanilla socks is a pattern by Summer Lee Designs called um, the I'm So Basic Sock, I think. <laughs> so um, yeah, those are my first finished object. My second finished object, which I will steal one of these sock blockers for. Do you guys have pets that always need to be on top of you when you're knitting or you're crocheting or you're doing anything crafty and it's like nothing else can steal your attention away from them or can be in your lap. So she always nestles her way uh, into my lap, but <laughs> that's okay. We love them for it. Um, my next finished object is a test knit for Emma over at the New York Year. Um, this is her design. It's a pattern coming out middle of March, I believe. Um, she wants to launch it around March 12th. So I got the pattern, I think, a week ago. And all of the testers almost cast on immediately. And everyone was posting... Um, in the group chat, you know, oh, I, I'm down to the toe or one of the women finished so quick and then was already on to her second sock. But I was like, all right, I think I did this in four days. Um, so it's the hatching sock. Again, this yarn is dyed by Barnyard Knits. Um, it was a leftover skein from my freer fade that I knit in 2018. And then the heel is a different color. So the heel is a little bit lighter. Um, when I had weighed the scrap yarn, it was 75 grams. And I figured if I split that in half, it would be enough for a set of socks, a uh, pair of socks. And I wanted to do the cuff matching the same color. So I figured I would do the heel. And it's only a shade lighter, so it's not super noticeable. And then I kept the toe the same color. So... The hatching, I don't know if you can, yeah, you can. You can see those line details. So gorgeous, very cylindrical. They follow around the foot. 
super easy pattern to follow. So if you like these socks, go follow Emma and I will continue posting about them on Instagram. I have one picture on my grid of this one halfway done and then I have to start the second. But the good thing about testing socks is you really only need to knit one, um, but, but when you wanna wear them, you need two. So we're, we're working on it, but that was a lovely F.O. Um, so I think that's all I have for F.O.s. Um, let's dive into whips. Um, so the next project I have is knit out of Pearl Soho Linen Quill. Shocker that this is not green, but this is a Highland wool alpaca and linen blend in the colorway chestnut red funny story about this and how it connects back to those socks that i just showed you um was that i won these in a giveaway i have four skeins from emma of the new york year i think in 2018 too that was a very a big year, very active year for me on Instagram. Um, and she was celebrating reaching a thousand uh, followers on Instagram. And I ended up winning them. And it was, I think, a week before the uh, New York City yarn crawl. And we had decided, you know, save on shipping because we both live in the city to meet up at Brooklyn General Store uh, during the yarn crawl. So that was back when this little munchkin was a puppy. And we brought Ginger on a walk to, uh, well, Subway, and then a walk to Brooklyn General Store. And Emma got to meet Ginge, and I think we all took a picture together, and it was so, so cute. Um, but yeah, so everything ties back to Emma in this episode, which I think is so coincidental. But it just goes to show, I've had these in my stash for a little over two years, and I wanted to knit them. Super soft, um, plushy yarn with the warmth of the wool and the alpaca. So now that you've seen the yarn, let me show you what I've been working on. Oh. Gigi, you got so much to say. So this was a whip I showed you in the last episode that only had a little bit of the collar done. So this is a fingering weight sweater. Um, it's called the bright side again. It's a free pattern by a Co. I Love their patterns They're the raglan designs are super easy to make um, I have a Paloma that I wore in episode one that Was my first sweater of theirs making aside from the shawl one of their patterns um, and it's just stupid simple super easy um, very digestible very simple like I said um, you know when people say keep it keep it stupid simple keep it something simple that's what i feel like my interpretation of their patterns are so back to the sweater i split for the sleeves i've been working on this like crazy the last few days just so i could get it a little bit further than the collar um and this is where we are at so split for the sleeves and then we'll just continue knitting. There are a few short rows in this. I think this is the back. Um, and I did mention in episode, I think episode two, I didn't gauge swatch and I normally don't, but I know that I am a loose knitter for most patterns and every designer I get a little bit more comfortable with in terms of where I should be with my needle size. So I think this pattern calls for 4.5 for the ribbing and then a five millimeter for the body. I am on a 4.5 for the body, so I normally always default go down, um, you know, one size. So if it's five millimeter, I go down 4.5, or you could call that half a size. But once you kind of get into the lower millimeters, it's uh, they do quarter millimeter. So I do still think it's a little airy. Um, you probably, oh yeah, you can see my hand through this. So I'm hoping when it's on, it won't be as noticeable. That's a little bit see-through or I'll, you know, of course wear a cami underneath, but I knit the second size. So normally with Espostri Co patterns, I knit size three, which gives 48 inch bust, which is plenty of positive ease for me. Um, I definitely need 
more positive ease just given my bust size um, and then the way that it kind of alters to the stomach. I normally wear high-waisted jeans and can French tuck or front tuck um, sweaters in so with the more fabric I have I can kind of get away with that um, but this sweater I haven't been able to measure from armpit to armpit to see what the bust will be but I definitely think it looks smaller than the Paloma which was a 50 inch bust um, and had plenty of positive ease for me so I think eventually I'll re-knit the Paloma in a different color and do a size down um, so there's a little less fabric for me and I'll see how the two kind of fit Ginger honey did you come here come here come here come on mommy has to edit this out now <laughs> okay next up I guess you could consider this a whip it is a gauge swatch so this is a gauge swatch for another Espostrico pattern I believe I am knitting the classic out of this so it's a DK weight this is the Chelsea Lux duet in colorway blue lagoon so her duets are a mohair base and a cobblestone which some dyers call it slub um, so if you see the mohair over here and then the cobblestone up here with little little blubs of extra fiber which is kind of gets coiled in and is a little bit more of a bubble of fiber um, so I have three of these duets I had bought two a few months ago and then when I bought the Galantine sock set I bought a third because I of course when I bought it I didn't know what I wanted to knit and then I think I figured out what I wanted or just a normal sweater for me um, needs over a thousand yards and normally uh, skein of mohair is 459 so that times two and then cobblestone is 438 438 yards per skein so times two again you're still under a thousand yards um so got the third play it safe and then this week i swatched for the classic so it's a similar um design to the paloma where it has a tall neck which is a twisted rib and then you work the raglan and then it's just kind of straight stocking that all the way down and it's pretty flowy and then they do offer a option to do a split hem um where the front is a little bit shorter of a hem and then the back is a little bit longer so I do still need to decide but I have time of course because all I have so far is a swatch um so again I went down in needle size for this one I think I knit this swatch on a four millimeter and the pattern calls for 4.5 that would make sense because I always go down the next needle size um I blocked it looks like I am two stitches over so their gauge swatch was 21 stitches for four inches across and I think I'm at 23 um, I'm okay with that because I'm sizing down for what I normally do or like I was talking about before for the Paloma I think that ended up with a 50 inch bust which for that sweater is very good because it's a it's a DK weight this will be too because it's mohair plus fingering um, but I want to see how this flows a little bit different if I go down three inches on the bust. So it still gives me, I think, five or so inches of positive ease. Um, and we'll see how it goes. Nothing I can do about the bust measurements. Um, so, but I know that this is very stretchy, um, very soft, and I think it will have a lot of give. So I'm looking forward to knitting that. Um, I wanted to start that last night but then I figured I'd work more on the bright side sweater the one in red um, so I could have more to show you on that one and then next episode maybe I'll be working both in tandem because like who has more than two sweaters on the needles and a pair of socks and, and I just need a shawl <laughs> um, so that is everything I have for you from a whip perspective I'm um, just looking in my other project bags. If there's anything else I can show you. Oh yeah, I can show you all of my leftover yarn. So from the Galantine sock, I had this much leftover. As you can see, 
this isn't a ball and if you heard my wonky skein winder saga you would understand why these look like hot dogs but I couldn't stand this one so I rewound this one um, and then for the hatching socks this is the dark green I'm working with and then the light green do, do you do we see this this mess these messes it's insane to me and then this is my other option which is also a leftover log from my find your fade um, which I will show you one day so you can understand kind of the color scheme um, we'll move on to stash acquisitions I have one sweater quantities worth of yarn that I have acquired since the last episode um, and I think I spoke last week a little bit about mohair I don't work with it or I haven't worked with it a ton in sweaters just because financially it quite literally doubles the cost of a sweater if you are holding something double with mohair um, and mohair tends to be a few dollars more if not the same price as a normal skein of yarn so without further ado this is what I got so this is from virtual dyes I have never tried any virtual dyes yarn before this is the colorway desert sunflower this is the mohair and this is a single ply fingering base um, so the place where I bought these only had single which I'm totally okay with um, as opposed to kind of a nylon blend or two ply so I have three of each and I am looking forward to knitting a sweater I think I think we are all on the train of uh, mohair I'll double for a sweater so it's gorgeous green color um, no shocker there it's a little bit lighter than what I'm wearing or you know kind of the color of the socks but still think it is a gorgeous color so looking forward to that who knows if I end up liking the way that the classic raglan from Espostri Co in the Blue Lagoon comes out Maybe I will also make one in Desert Sunflower from Ritual Dyes. So the possibilities are really endless and I am looking forward to knitting all of that stuff. Um, I should have my podcast notes in front of me because I write notes and then I leave them on my desk. But I think that is all I have for you guys. Um, showed you fo's all my socks um and this shawl the next episode will be in a few weeks we'll see how much i can get knit and um be happy to share that with you i owe you some quilting videos i have a quilt which i'm looking at right now on my bed it's folded up like a burrito just waiting to be finished quilt topped um i have about half of the top quilted and then once I finish that, then I will work on the binding and it'll be done. And then I can wash it and start using it. Um, I think it'll be a good throw size quilt. Um, but otherwise, do, 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 I think that's all we have. Right, Ginger? Is that all we have for them? Come here. You guys say goodbye? Well, thank you guys so much for joining me. If this was your first episode, welcome. I hope you will subscribe and stick around. Uh, if it's your third episode and you've been with me since the start, thank you so much for subscribing. And thank you to all of you who have commented and said that episode one was great and you really enjoyed it. That is very encouraging for someone who is just starting out. And I appreciate your kind words so, so, so much and I hope you will stick around for more. Um, try to be as creative as possible with sharing with you what I can, um, including that spinning video of all of those bats I hauled in the last video that is posted on the channel from my friend, Amanda, at Bellinated Boho Bay. Um, if you haven't watched that haul yet, definitely do if you're interested in spinning and if you're just a knitter and you have no interest in that, still give it a, a watch it's always interesting to see what other people in the fiber community are doing with other avenues of fiber not necessarily just knitting or crocheting um so highly 
encourage you to do so and just kind of become more well-rounded in what there is to do um, with this great craft because like I was heavily influenced by Amanda um, to you know kind of get acquainted to different fibers and then get a wheel or a drop spindle and spin my own yarn um, so I'm spinning all this yarn and now I have to figure out what to knit with it so it definitely is a rabbit hole and I have fallen down it but um, I couldn't be more happy for it to be with knitting and fiber um, and I'm sure you would agree if you're sitting here and got this far in the video well last time I'll sign off <laughs> For this video but thank you so much for catching episode three i hope you will subscribe if you aren't already and if you're new to me and to my channel comment down below introduce yourself tell me where you live what your favorite project to work on whether that's socks or shawls or sweaters or mittens um whatever it may be and i would love to get to follow along in your projects so you can comment on every video and just let me know what's going on um would love that so thank you guys so much i will catch you in the next one have a great day night week month whenever you are catching this bye